Now, obviously, whenever you're uh, solving for this type of equation, you're not going to erase everything. You're check. Everything else is going to follow whatever you did previously, right? So, what they're going to do again is going to say solve and check, right? Now, we've already solved it and we've got the solution of x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. If we didn't write our restrictions that eliminate this, because of our restrictions, because we knew this, this, the problem with 0 will come up when we're doing a check. So solving part, straightforward. We already figured out it was x equals 0 and x equals 3. Let's do a check on this. The way you do a check is you just write down check. Right? Now, when you're doing a check, you don't use the equal sign. What you're trying to do is see if when you plug in these numbers into the left side of the equation and into the right side of the equation, if the answers are going to work out, if, if one side is going to equal the other side. So you can't put an equal sign and just follow it through and move things around from one side of the equation to the other. Whenever you're doing a check, you deal with the left side of the equation, you deal with the right side of the equation, nothing moves over. You can't move it over because what you're trying to do is check to see if your solutions work in the equation. Basically, if your solutions that you've got make this side of the equation equal to that side of the equation. So let's do this. Let's do uh, x is equal, check on x is equal to 3 first, okay? So we're going to do x is equal to 3, we're going to check it. And over here, we're going to go the left side of the equation. That means ls. We, in, short, in short, you just put down ls, okay? So left side of the equation. Over here is the right side of the equation. Okay. What you're going to do is plug in x is equal to 3 into the left side. So this is 5 over 3 times 3, because we're subbing in x is equal to 3. On this side, we're going to go 3 times 3 plus 1 over 6 times 3. So wherever you see x, you're plugging in 3. 5 over 3 times 3, that's just 5 over 9. Now we can't simplify that anymore, so that's just 5 over 9 on this side. Over here, we've got 3 times 3 is 9. Three times three is nine, plus one is ten, right? And six times three is eighteen. Now five over nine, is that equal to ten over eighteen? Well, yeah, it is. If you remember, well, obviously you should remember. If you've come to, if we've come this far, I'm not gonna uh, you know, we shouldn't have to go through simplifying this, right? But two goes both into ten and eighteen. So ten over eighteen is five over nine. And the left side of the equation is 5 over 9. The right side of the equation is 5 over 9. And this works out. So x is equal to 3 is a solution. So you put a little check mark here, so that works. You've done your check. Now what you have to do is do a check for your other solution, right? x is equal to 0. So let's plug it in and go through the work, right? 5 over 3 times 0. So it's the same thing, right? You're just plugging in x is equal to 0 for wherever you see x. 3 times 0 plus 1 over 6 times 0. Now, this is going to be 5 over 0. This is going to be 3 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1 over 0. Now, is 5 over 0 equal to 1 over 0? We don't know because we can't divide by 0. In our equation, we already know x is equal to 3 works. But for this equation, we don't know what happens when x is equal to 0, okay? It doesn't mean it goes on forever. Infinity doesn't mean it goes on forever. Infinity is not, really, it's not a number. It's, it's, it's us, you know, saying that we don't know what happens. It explodes. Something, something goes haywire in the language of math. 5 divided by 0, 1 divided by 0, we don't know. Check this is not, you know, this doesn't work. So you eliminate x is equal to 0. So the only solution to this equation is x is equal to 3. Now I know I'm beating a dead horse here, you know, we've done this, you know, we keep on working on this, uh, on this equation. But uh, 
I just want to get the point across of how this stuff works and hopefully this made sense. I know I've jumped over a few concepts that we will be dealing with later on, uh, specifically when it comes to factoring. But I just wanted to go through this with the cross multiplication as well. Okay.